Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Today we'll talk about Oracle Jet JavaScript Extension Toolkit. Recently there was a new release, number 13. And uh, yeah, lately I was, uh, uh, I'm working quite a lot with uh, Django, with Python. And in Django you have uh, HTML templates and you could include any uh, UI libraries or toolkits into this uh, this HTML templates and Django will inject data into the uh, HTML structure and will return it. Uh, Django injects data on the server side and returns back the HTML response uh, to the client and the uh, browser renders that uh, response, right? So, yeah, well, looking at the different sets of open source uh, UI components uh, to be rendered on the client and so on, I came to, to the conclusion that um, Oracle Jet is a uh, very competitive um, toolkit. It offers a great, great set of UI components. Uh, for example, table. If you look in a table, then with Oracle Jet you get uh, table pagination out of the box, um, then lots of uh, formatting support, uh, then there's an uh, option to select uh, multiple rows out of the box, uh, filtering and so on. So you typically would not get all this kind of functionality out of the box with um, other components. You There is a way to implement it, but you need to spend more time uh, by yourself to implement this logic well. With Jet you get uh, everything out of the box and you can focus on your enterprise um, logic implementation, not on UI uh, things, integration and so on, because it comes out of the box for you. And uh, yeah, this video is about um, uh, to show how to run and and uh, basically Jet component in a single HTML page. Because typically when you create Jet application, uh, you create it based on Jet template and then you get a set of configuration files. There is a main uh, HTML JavaScript file and then there is a set of um, fragments uh, with its own uh, that, that comes that come with um, also HTML and uh, JavaScript files and uh, additional configuration, and then and then all together comes into the main uh, file and uh, UI is rendered from that main file, right? But uh, when integrating Jet components into in other technologies like Django, where you have single uh, HTML page uh, for each form, for example, you, you don't have the single uh, SPA application like a single page application anymore. You have multiple pages. And then <clears throat> uh, you want rather to be able to take single uh, Oracle Jet component like table or uh, input search, uh, whatever, and include this component into your page along with uh, other uh, UI that may be implemented not with Jet, with uh, other libraries and toolkits. So for this case, you need to be able to run Jet from the single page environment uh, without any other configuration files. Probably you could make it with other configuration files as well, but it's much more convenient when uh, you have this uh, structure focused and uh, yeah, when it all comes to the single file and all the configuration is done in a single file without um, having a headache to load any dependencies uh, from elsewhere and so on. And uh, also, uh, when you set up Oracle Jet component to render in a single HTML file, it's easier to specify uh, which uh, to which HTML tag to bind uh, Jet context in in the scope of the page. Yeah, so let's uh, jump to uh, my desktop and let's see how it works. So, uh, first of all, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Oracle Jet uh, JavaScript UI Toolkit, I'll put a link below the video. Uh, if you go to this uh, website, uh, it comes with a great um, uh, list of all the UI components supported by Oracle Jet inside Cookbook. You can go there and it's interactive Cookbook. You can uh, change the HTML, JavaScript and also there's a TypeScript implementation for any UI component. Uh, change it, apply and immediately you will see uh, the, your changes and this way it's easier to play and interact and uh, research uh, your component and understand how you could use it in your own environment. And there are other resources, uh, success stories, uh, linked to the GitHub and other stuff and to the uh, links to the documentation as well. 
so what I did, I went to the this. If you if you look into the get started, uh, I think guide get started section. These uh, instructions the, there you'll find instructions how to install Oracle Jet. Then you could use it from Visual Builder, Oracle Low Code Environment, and another option is uh, GS Fiddle Playground. And if if you go here, you would see example uh, with uh, which runs latest Oracle Jet release uh, number thirteen, and it renders table. And here you'll see HTML section is CSS and uh, JavaScript. And this is basically uh, this environment. Uh, this environment is uh, is running in a single page. Uh, it's only <clears throat> in GS Fiddle. It's structured into multiple sections, but uh, essentially you can download this uh, code as a single page uh, if you add uh, at the end of the URL uh, show and uh, yeah, and then you would get, let, let's see, uh, then you would get, if you get show and we click run and, and then we can right click and um, uh, open frame no show frame source yeah and and this this basically will return you uh this uh, single page code that you uh would need to run jet component in a single page yeah so this is what i did i, I copied this code into uh html pa page in my devel local development environment and wh what we, we see here is um, a set of uh, html tags uh, standard thing, then this is a reference to the require min GS. Then this is a reference to a CSS file for Oracle Jet styling. And then this is a OG table. This is the Oracle Jet table component itself, uh, uh, which uh, uh, is included into the HTML page structure, right? And then it goes uh, JavaScript. Uh, Part uh, we load all the context, uh, all the libraries required to run Oracle Jet, and then we have um, view model definition. And in in this place we define uh, JavaScript logic which is required to support UI for the table. Uh, basically, this means we load uh, uh, data here. For example, we data is loaded in this case from uh, from the uh, REST service uh, from the trans on Oracle Apex instance, and there are uh, additionally formatters and converters uh, defined to display um, numbers uh, in a proper format in table, and then we apply bindings to HTML element with ID table, and this is, uh, if you scroll up, this is actually Oracle Jet component uh, with ID table, so Jet binding, Jet context will be uh, apply to this element. Okay, and then this uh, get uh, CDN path function, which uh, helps to load uh, Oracle Jet libraries and dependencies from CDN. Then there's a required JS configuration at the end, and uh, that's all. So probably you would reuse the get CDN path and uh, uh, require JS config functions in your own uh, implementation. And then you you could uh, uh, use any uh, of the Jet UI components and uh, add supporting logic in JavaScript. Uh, apply binding to the top uh, container where uh, Jet component is implemented, and uh, uh, it, it should work uh, out of the box. And in in future, I'll I'll explain also how to load static data. Because in case of uh, Django, data will be prepared on the server side, and uh, we would like to inject this data into the HTML uh, response, and uh, then Jet component should be able to load data not from external REST service, but uh, from the data that comes together with uh, HTML response. Yeah, and if we go back to the browser, so this is how uh, it looks like we can select roles, we can scroll, and this is the most basic table, uh, mo the most basic option of the table that is rendered through JET. There are options with uh, pagination, uh, checkbox row selection, filtering, and uh, and so on, uh, many things. Uh, you can also do um, uh, inline editing and, and things like that. Okay, so yeah, in this 
video my goal was to uh, show how you could run jet component not within jet uh, application shell but outside in a plain html application without installing locally any uh, node uh, dependencies from npm and so on it's all uh, loaded uh, on demand when the page uh, is being rendered and uh, UI is being uh, uh, rendered as well. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.